A little while back, I purchased this uh, 50 to 1 harmonic drive. And while the drive can be used for other operations, my main reason for purchasing it was to be used on my plasma CNC. To keep all the current from going through the harmonic drive, I added this strap to the chuck. The strap is bolted to one side of my fixture. The other side of the strap is connected to the opposite side of the fixture via the spring. This keeps a constant tension between the strap and the chuck. My goal in this experiment is to cut some patterns out in this uh, tin can. One of the problems for cutting uh, tin cans like this are these very narrow grooves in the can. So going in, I know I'm not going to get the best cut quality. The surface of the can is about 3.31 inches in diameter and uh, this calculates to a circumference of about just slightly under 10.4 inches so we'll use that. In Corel Draw I created a rectangle that was 10.4 inches tall by 2.35 inches wide and then I placed some uh, stars in the middle as shown here. Uh, this is what I'm going to try to cut into the can. I created a DXF file and imported that into SheetCam where I created the plasma tool pass for the stars. One way to add a rotary to your CNC is to simply replace one of the axes with the stepper motor controlling your rotary. In this case I'm going to be swapping it out with my Y. So that one complete revolution of the can equals 10.4 inches. I changed the uh, steps per, in this case, to 9600. There are other ways of doing this, but for this experiment, uh, it, it'll work fine. I uh, used the y-axis to move the plasma cutter so that it was dead center of the uh, can, as shown here. With the motor controller disabled, I swapped out the uh, rotary drive and the y-axis stepper motor. I also had to disable or remove the uh, a-axis since this is a dual drive y-axis system. I set my x-axis reference point so that uh, the stars would cut near the end as shown here. Here I'm doing a dry run just to see how everything's going to work and it looks pretty good so let's go make the cut. Here I had an Arc OK failure from the uh, Everlast plasma cutter. I think this is because the gauge is just so thin that the pilot arc just blows through it before an arc signal can be received. For this reason I have a button set up to bypass or to actually create an Arc OK signal if this happens. The little protective uh, guard I added to the uh, rotary keeps a lot of the plasma dust, if not all of it, off the chuck in rotary here. But uh, as you'll see in a minute, we're going to flip the can and it's not the case. Here I'm going to flip the can so that I can do the pattern near the other end of the, uh, the can. Because of the cap 4 uh, capacitance ring, I can't get too close, so we're just going to flip the can. Unfortunately, this exposes all the, the dust and debris to the chuck. As you can see here, it cuts pretty darn good, but it blows everything right into the chuck, which we'll take a look at here shortly. So 
So here's a look at the uh, repurposed tin can with a candle inside. And here are three cans with those little LED tea lights inside. Well, I'm happy with the results. I think I can do some tweaking to get the cuts a little bit better, but that's something I'll have to practice with once I collect some more cans. What has me more worried is the amount of nastiness that's getting on the chuck. It doesn't make its way through to the harmonic drive but I know this chuck will eventually fail so I've got to find some way of blocking this one one possible solution would be maybe plugging the can somehow so that's something I'm gonna have to look into well that's it for this video and I tell you I'm gonna do some more experiments but um, I have to figure out the dust issue first and once I do that, then we'll get into some more uh, rotary plasma cutting. Until next time, talk to you later.